the craft of knife making is meditative in a sense. You're concentrating fully and making sure that it fits the end user very well. Instead of using just a mono steel or just one type of steel, I decided to do Damascus. Damascus is welding two types of steel together in a forge. And so I decided to use 1095 and 15 and 20 because when I do the etching, one turned darker and the other one stays light. So you give it that contrast. We're gonna alternate the layers and make sure that it's clean. There are three rules in, in welding, clean, clean, clean. So what I'm going to do now, I'm getting ready to weld these up so they can stick together. Safety, safety, safety. We're getting ready to weld. Let's get this done. The way that I would describe knife making is taking nothing and to make something. My style is almost Japanese a little bit, but I take bits from the Japanese culture and the European culture and kind of blend it together to make my own. Since we welded this together, I'm going to weld a handle to it and we're going to put it in the forge. The knife we're making today is called a bunka. It is basically a blend between a nakiri and a chef knife. It's, it's called a plunge cut. It is instead of rocking it, it's more straight down. It's more of a Japanese style, and it's a little bit more precise. Forge welding is basically getting the steel up to a temperature where it fuses to itself. I don't have a meter on my, my forge, so I need to go by color. The color that I'm looking for is, if you think about the sun, if the sun is at 12 o'clock in its highest point, it's almost like a yellowish orange. That's the same color that I'm looking for that's inside the forge, and that's how I know that it's around 2300 degrees. Since this is an open forge, I need to kind of close it off so that he can kind of stay in. So this is ceramic wool and it's not going to catch on fire. And what I'm going to do now is set it and forget it. <laughs> and after we heat up the billet to 2300 degrees, we use the hydraulic press to elongate the billet and uh, allow it to adhere to one another. Yep, we there. Woo. So I have the flat part of my dies where I'm lightly touching it, so I'm kind of uh, making sure that it's stuck together. And I have the rounded part of my dies right here, so I'm kneading it to push it out to make it longer. The reason why I got into knife making is um, a boy's love of making a sword because I fell in love with uh, Conan the Barbarian, Star Wars, He-Man. So I would take a tubing off my swing set and flatten it on a cinder block and chase my brothers around the yard like, ah, I'm He-Man. And that's where the passion and love of swords or knives or the adventure, that's where it started. I need to straighten it out, so I'm gonna whack it a few times to make it straight so everything will line up real nice when I cut it. So we already um, got the, the length that I want, so now we're gonna to try to get the pattern. It's basically like teeth that I'm gonna, it's gonna chomp inside of it, and basically it's called a ladder pattern. You'll see where it really reveals itself at the end when I'm grinding the, the knife. The next process is normalizing. Normalizing is allowing the, the steel to rest and let it heat up and then cool down very slowly. So in the end, we won't have any cracks or anything like that. 
forging is only one third of knife making. It's a lot of people romanticize it and they're saying like, oh, you have to forge, but it's truly a very small piece. The real important part about knife making is the heat treating and the grinding. So that's what makes a knife great. So next, what we're getting ready to do is uh, grind the profile of the knife. So I'm gonna grind away the excess on the billet. So right now it is kind of fragile. Um, I do have to be a little careful. I can't just bang it on the ground. I do have to take care and pay attention to the steel. So this part right here, I'm getting ready to put myself into the knife. Geometry is very important because I need to work well. I need to be able to rock well. Early on, I uh, watched an executive chef named Craig Deal. I spent a lot of time in his kitchen watching him move and, and how he perform in his kitchen. So that's how I kind of figure out what the knife needs to do, basically. The most important part of knife making is the heat treating. And that's, I have to know what type of steel I'm using. I need to heat it up to its critical temperature where if you think about the, the crystals inside the steel, it needs to realign and kind of mesh together. But the only way that it can do that if it's getting to their critical temperature and the critical temperature for 1095 and 15 and 20 is around 1500 degrees. I want the, the grain structure to stay this way. So that's when I would take it out of the forge and stick it in oil and that's called quenching. So taking it from 1500 degrees and cooling it down to around maybe 700 degrees within seconds, that shocks it, but it's really brittle. It's really hard, but it's real brittle, like cast iron. I could take a hammer and hit it and it will shatter. The next process is tempering. That's heating it up to a lower temperature, around 400 degrees, but at a longer span of time. Just like if you're doing dough, you need to allow the dough to rest and to rise. So that's what I'm doing with the steel when it's in the kiln. That softens the steel a little bit. So you have a blend between hard and soft. I want it, I want it to be hard to hold an edge, but I want it to be soft enough to resharpen and flex a little bit. I used to work in a local mall and I was selling cigars, knives, swords, and my mentor, Jason Knight, <laughs> he came in, he bought this cool sword and he just said, oh yeah, I make knives for a living. And to a 17 year old, like I'm like, oh, can you teach me? That's how I really got into knife making. So basically, what I'm looking for in this step is the 50 grit, it grinds the, uh, the bevels. And then after that, I need to get the scratches out. So that's the progression of the um, belts. Basically, after I grind with the 50 grit, I'm polishing after that. I started making hunting knives, bowie knives, swords, until um, I had a dream. Man, basically, the Holy Spirit was telling me, make chef knives. I made a few knives and I took it to a few chefs. Everybody looking at, oh, this is cool, this is awesome. And every last one of them put it back down. After everybody left, the, the executive chef told me, he said like, hey, these knives are cool, but they're too thick, they're too heavy, they're too clunky. So he gave me some parameters to kind of go by and watch how he moves in his kitchen that allowed me to become the chef knife maker that I am now. I want to make the, the grain pop because we went through the whole process of using two types of steel. So I used uh, ferric chloride This is basically a developer, and it, it will attack the high carbon steel, that's the 1095, then the 15 and 20, is, it has more nickel in it, so it's gonna stay brighter, so you will see the contrast in uh, the steel. This little shake um, is 
my very first, I guess, knife, <laughs> you could say. I made this when I was seven. But um, this one has a little bit more sentimental value. My dad passed away in 2007. And when I was young, I, I remember he took this, from, after I made it, he threw it on top of the china cabinet and maybe 20 years later, I just wanted to reach up there. I just wanted to see if it was still there. And sure enough, it was there. And my dad was the last one that touched it. So I guess, man, <laughs> uh, this is very, I get, I get emotional about it because I love my dad. I'm going to tape up the blade so I can protect it from other elements like scratching. And so we get ready for the handle. Each knife that I make has its own personality. So it's basically like trying to figure out what the knife wants to wear. The design of the handle is very, very important. When you grab it, it's very bulby in the center. So it just feels very comfortable. So now that we forged and we grind um, the knife in, the, in its bevels and we've ground the profile of the handle material. So now we're gonna combine them. We're gonna use some glue. So one part is this is the resin and the other part is a hardener. So it's just like peanut butter and jelly. I'm just spreading on, on both of the handle material. And now we're gonna add the screws. I'm going real slow with it, I don't want to crack it. So yeah, we just set it and let it dry. So there are two types of material that I use. I use this secret sauce, but this is a, basically a great sealer and a, uh, it seals the wood and allows it to uh, look really nice. And, I'll, and the second product I use is a wax you're gonna see the pattern and this wood really jump as soon as I apply this on it. A lot of knife makers say this is their favorite part. The next step is once we buff the handle, um, now it's time for me to sharpen it. The thing that gives it its quality is the details. Paying attention on temperature, the grinding process, the handle material. Instead of doing thousands at a time, I'm doing one knife at a time. I'm paying attention to the small details, the little things that come from my 18 years of making knives. My experience is my mistakes. I'm putting everything inside that knife, each and every knife I make. It looks awesome. It looks really cool. But now, the thing that keeps my clients is that it performs well. So that's why I think my knives are kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, uh, the bonga is a little bit more for a professional chef, really. Where the tip is, it allows you to have a little bit more precise cuts and is straight to the point uh, versus a chef knife to give you that rock and this one is right to it. And it just works well from vegetables to protein. But when I make that knife and I'm finished and I'm looking at the, the, the end product, I'm thinking like, wow, this is an awesome piece of knife. But I'm not just thinking of the right now gratification. I'm thinking about the years that took me to get to the point that I am now, the 18 years of learning how to make the knives and the mistakes. So every time I finish a knife, that comes to mind. Yeah, it's my heart, it's my love, it's my soul. I'm putting that inside each knife I make.